Okay, so on this job, uh, I was called out here by the customer who said the boiler wasn't running all morning. He couldn't get it to fire even though the heat and everything was on. Uh, and the ground floor wasn't particularly warm. Uh, when I get, got there, the boiler was working, however, and it's running there for hot water. Um, so that was fine. The next two port, uh, which was for the heating upstairs and downstairs, but the radiators that was, uh, that was open and it was running for that. Uh, and the last two port, which was for the underfloor heating system, wasn't opening. And the underfloor heating does all the ground floor in this property. Um, so, you know, that was probably why nothing was working. Probably what had happened was the radiators upstairs had reached temperature and was off on the room stat. Um, the hot water cylinder was satisfied. Uh, and it was just that the downstairs was cold and when he got to the boiler it wasn't running so I assumed it was a boiler fault. Uh, obviously when I got there it was running so I knew it was something it was similar to that but I had to work out what it could be and this was what I came up with. So I know that two ports not opening and one handed I'm putting my micrometer on there. I've got 240. Uh, I'll get a bit closer here so you can see and you can see quite easy. I'm going across the brown for the two port and the uh, neutral. So we've got 240, the valve's not opening. Uh, one or two things there, the, the body's jammed or the synchro motor's gone. So, or both, to be honest, it could be both. So here, this is how I free off valves. I get a little spanner on there, a bit of WD-40, and I work it and back and forth until it's not stiff anymore which doesn't take very long usually on a Honeywell. And the way I determine that I'm done and it's uh, free enough is uh, if I can twist it with my fingers. And uh, as you can see, I can twist that quite easily with my fingers. Um, so what happened here now, I changed the uh, Synchron, put the head on, and when I tighten this head down, it would seize up and wasn't very good so I spoke to the customer and he was happy for me to change the head so I've changed the whole actuator and this I always cut the wire of the old actuator and that way you cut and then I wire one core at a time that way you can never get it wrong um, so this is it all wired in but I'll show you a pet hate of mine here look you see that brown and the grey there I don't like that when you can see bare cores so I've redone that connection there you can see there now you see every wire I've put in there you can't see any copper cores I really don't like to see that uh, and this is basically all done and dusted now that's the rubbish just have a little tidy up So this is my unusual mode of transport here today. Um, I'm, I've come on a scooter because I've got a, um, a hearing about a parking fine down in Chancery Lane and obviously there's no parking down there. Uh, so I got this call last night, I knew what I was coming against. So you see I brought a timer, I brought a 28mm 2 port um, and my hand tools and a bit of WD-40 just in case. Always bring a multimeter wherever I go and uh, things like meter discs and stuff I always carry just in case I walk into some sort of disaster I could disc it and deal with it later on today when I got back home after the hearing so thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on the next one